uh, I don't know if it was in the Wall Street Journal about um, uh, energy in China. They have doubled, what is it, their coal production in like three years? Not only that, they've now uh, surpassed the United States in energy usage per capita. We were, not per capita, I'm sorry, total energy usage They're on their way to per capita, Glenn, because they did it, they're doing it so quickly. They're rapidly increasing. They have a okay. food problem, they have an energy problem, but they're solving it, solving it better than we are. Okay, so um, you have, if you take out energy it's mm. not just gasoline i no. have a friend who's john huntsman he has the big chemical plant he told me he said glenn you use oil in the in the tablets that you take for medicine sure you sure. use oil in everything look at it this way the the cotton at an all time high you say jeans uh wool, the coats so, so you say what about wool well wool prices have gone up too you say, you say how about polyester energy it's oil oil it's yeah. almost all oil. okay so here's the thing, America, I, I just want you to think of this. The, the world is changing. The world is changing. And you can listen to yourself in the grocery store or you can listen to the people in Washington. Now, maybe they're right. Maybe in the end this all goes away and this is just a little spike. Maybe they're right. But we're talking about the future of our country and we're talking about our children. So now what do you do about it? Not, not the big Wall Street investors. I'm going to tell you how to invest your money. What do you do about it? Real life. Next. <laughs> if, if I had one thing to um, uh, describe my family growing up, <laughs> it would be mason jars. I, I, I may be one of the only people in Manhattan uh, that have mason jars for drinking glasses because that's what we used to, we, we used the mason jars for drinking glasses when I was growing up. Um, I think because we couldn't afford real glasses. Um, my mom used to can and my aunt still does. I just talk, talked to my Aunt Joanne here recently. She just finished canning. They learned it from their mom. This is from the Great Depression. Of course I can, but read this. I'm patriotic as can be, and ration points won't worry me. Why we think now, somehow or another, food will always be plentiful is beyond me. We now go to stores, because nobody really does this. Some people still do. We should learn this, make sure it's not a lost art. But some people just go to stores, and we always just think that stores are always going to be there, and they'll always have food on the shelves. It is an anomaly. This has been a, an incredible time period in the history of the world. Now what happens? What happens if you're on the edge and um, you lose your job? My faith teaches that you should have food storage and it took me a long time to do it. It took me about a year to actively build it up and I have a year's worth of food storage and I have weapons. Um, but I have a, a, a year's worth of food storage and one thing that I didn't realize would happen to me. When I finished, my wife brought me downstairs and she said, we're finally finished. And she went back upstairs and I just sat there and I admired it for a while. And this isn't going to come as a surprise to you, but I actually wept because of this. As a dad, the weight was lifted off my shoulders. The weight is so heavy about worrying about what happens if I lose my job. It's amazing what happens. Even if nothing bad happens in the world, what food storage, what a blessing it is. Lisa Bedford calls herself the survival mom. She is here. She teaches food storage and preparedness classes, but that's not what you did in the past. Two years, no. You've done doing this for two years. Two years. What made you start getting into food storage? You know, we were where a lot of families are right now with just a dawning realization that the world is changing, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah. And my husband is in construction in the Phoenix area. Oof. And even though, our, yeah, even though our business was doing okay two years ago, we saw bad things happen to good people. Right. And jobs lost, um, homes lost. And one night my husband and I said, we need to be proactive. And so we did the easiest step possible. We actually just went to the grocery store with two carts and we began filling them up. It's really hard. I know when my wife and I um, started, uh, just the calculation of, okay, well, how much would we eat in this amount of time and how much, I mean, it's, it's, it's daunting. It's daunting. You have put together a system 
for it, right? Are you, what, what, like, where would people yeah. start? I think that for just at the very beginner level, I think a challenge to give them is to say, prepare for one week's of emergency and assume you have no power. And that starts the wheels turning. You start thinking, okay, what kind of food can I set aside that doesn't require refrigeration? <laughs> you start thinking about things like shelf life. You start thinking about family allergies and preferences because you want to store things that make sense for your family. Yeah. It is not a one-size-fits-all no, plan. I, I will tell you this. I, I am, I'm a pretty prepared guy. Um, but we lost power for, gosh, a week here this last mm -hmm. winter. And I realized how unprepared I even am. I mean, right. I'm, I'm right. prepared, but we got into it like four days and I'm like, okay, I don't know if we have any more batteries left. I don't know mm -hmm. if we have this, I don't know if we have this, you know, it, it's bizarre. Now, this obviously is, um, we're, we're going down the road of, you know, total meltdown, which God only knows. But what I want you to focus on tonight is just the rise of inflation. How close are you to the edge? Are you the average American that is living paycheck to paycheck? Now, how do you, if that paycheck turns off, or if inflation goes up and you can't afford new clothing or you can't afford some of the, the food because it's just gone up in price by 20%, how do you survive? What can you do now? We'll go into that next. You want to save your country, you have to be part of the solution, not the problem. You have to think outside of the box. We were just talking about people who live on the edge. How many millions of Americans are living on the edge? If, let's say, oil shoots through the roof, we have $5 a gallon gasoline. That translates to inflation all across the board. People who are living on, we already have 50 million people living on food stamps right now. If it collapses because of oil prices, how many more people need to go onto food stamps? It is Cloward and Piven. Be a shelter for your family, and then if you can afford it, for others as well. I want to talk a little to the audience. Katie, we were talking during the break, and you um, are just starting to do some food storage of some sort. Why? Yeah, my, my husband started a business um, at the beginning of the year, and it depends on cotton. Holy cow. And uh, we've, we've watched it absolutely um, ripple through his company, but the impact that it has on our household, because you can't just constantly pass that on to your vendors and your customers because they're in the same position we are. So we eat more and more of it in terms of the profit. Yeah. And one of the things we can do is, is try to buy and store. In advance, and, right. Yeah. Christine, you were saying the same thing. You're kind of in, you're in livestock. Feed has gone absolutely through the roof, and I actually board horses, but I have trouble. I can't pass it on to my boarders necessarily because they're really in the same boat as everybody else. Right. So it does make it a real difficult. That's what we were saying. Um, I've told you on the program before that um, uh, the experts tell me that um, there's a th corn could go, and all, all of the food is like the sugar is like sixty or seventy dollars a, a, a little bag of sugar. Um, an ear of corn could be $11, $11. The only thing that will stop it from being $11 is the market can't bear it. Nobody could, I mean, you could raise it to a million, it doesn't matter. So where does it stop? Six before people can't afford it anymore? Um, we have, I can't see here because of Harry, is this uh, Nancy? Nancy, you were, um, um, you were actually in, um, you live here in Manhattan. Uh, metropolitan, metropolitan New York. New York. So, so you're you're living in um, a place where everything is very small and very expensive. Right. Are, are you food storage? I am. Um, what I do is minimal compared to um, some of the other moms that I've been talking to, and some of the moms that, as a mom, who have a, a real production going on. Um, but I do, and I've increased it um, over the year. I'd say uh, for this past year, uh, and you don't need to necessarily be a tin hatter living in a bunker typing away on the computer to believe that this is happening. All you have to do is remember, I remember as a kid the Carter years and the inflation that, that took place and what an impact that had on middle income average families. You know, I'm one of six and my father was a teacher and our household uh, overhead just yeah. rose dramatically but the salaries didn't and I remember as a mom I have appreciation for what my mother went through 
knowing that she had two kids nearing college and four others to feed and and the whole nine that goes along with it and as a mom i appreciate that and i have that same anxiety so it's it's only a matter of common sense as a mom is a great phrase and i'll explain why here in a second and a little more uh, direction on where to go and how to start next our economy. I want to, um, uh, on the bottom of the screen, you should see some uh, websites that are, um, that are uh, providing information for you on how to get involved and, um, and what to do. Um, the um, inflation we're tracking, uh, we are also looking, there are ways for you to get involved on, in the littlest way all the way to, I want to have food storage for 10 for five years you can do whatever you want just listen to your gut please i want to tell you a little bit um about uh as a mom uh dot org lori it is dot org right Mm -hmm. okay um lori parker has been on the uh, program she is the um uh president and founder of as a mom dot org also barbara samuels she is the co-founder of 912 super seniors dot org Quickly, what do you guys, what do you, what is the one piece of advice you would have for, for somebody who's watching right now? If you don't know about food storage, get online, find out about it. Our front page, we have a thing that's Food Storage 101. I wrote a year ago because people were asking questions. What is food storage? Why is Glenn and Mormon in food storage? And so I answered all of that. <laughs> and so weird. we have an answer. We have Food Storage 102 has tons of links to things. Okay. Just Google it. Yeah, you know what? I, I will tell you, since Lori brought it up, I have a Mormon and this is a faith. Just just ask a Mormon. You'll, I mean, they'll be helping you can. It'll be crazy. Um, <laughs> Barbara, tell me about the tell me about super seniors because you know the one thing that really bothers me is that seniors are retiring. Stop retiring. Get involved, and that's what you, your project is doing. What do you? What's yes. the piece of advice you have? Yes. Okay. Well, since you asked the seniors to get involved, they have inundated our website with offers of homeschooling, teaching, helping, volunteer. You can. 700 of them have volunteered to do the food inflation survey. Great. They're out there already. We have 100 survey results Good. in. And the seniors know what it is to plan for the future. They're planning now. Food storage canning, they're planning now. Okay, and one more. Um, Lisa is here, and she go to her website as well, the survivalmom.com. You can find all this information. Just remember, glennbeck.com. It will direct it all, direct you all to these sites and so much more information. Back in a minute.